Well, all right, everyone, I'm Don Does Math, and this video is about what to expect from taking a calculus class. As a bit of background, I have a bachelor's in applied math, and I run a small Twitch stream uh, for math help as well as video games. I'm making this video because when I took a calculus class for the first time, my professor never really gave an overview of what calculus is or where we're going and why it's important. So I'm making this video for others out there who might think like me, who might benefit from that kind of explanation. Let's start with Wikipedia's definition of calculus. Wikipedia says, calculus is the mathematical study of continuous change in the same way that geometry is a study of shape and algebra is the study of generalizations of arithmetic operations. Now, there had been some calculus-related discoveries before, but it was really um, invented by Newton and Leibniz in the late 1600s. As a little aside, there's some debate over which one of those two really invented calculus. But the most likely explanation is that they discovered it independently of each other at the same time as each other. So calculus is a study of change, and calculus is split up into two major parts, derivatives and integrals. Let's start by looking at derivatives. And to explain what a der derivative is, simply it's the rate of change, but that doesn't mean that much until you've actually shown what we mean by that. So let's start off with a simple case of a, of a function and look at its rate of change, a line. I'm going to use a line y equals 2x, which I chose for a specific reason that I will get into later. I'm going to draw some basic coordinate axes. We don't have to be too exact with how we graph this. We just want values that are semi-accurate. So for y equals 2x, I'm assuming here that you know basically how to graph a line, but we have no y-intercept because we have no plus b here. So we start from the point 0, 0. Our slope here is 2, so we rise 2 and run 1, and here's another point on our line. Connect them, and here's our graph. So the way we think about the, the rate of change here is for every 1x we put in an input, say from 0 to 1, we go up by 2y's, our output. So if we go from 0 to 2 here, even though we only put in 1x. It's helpful for me to think about functions in terms of this input and output. It might not work for everyone, though. The key, the, the key message here is that for every time we change 1 by x, we go up 2 by y. And inversely, if we take 1x away, we go down by 2y. So let's look at a second example here. And that's going to be y equals x squared. This is a bit harder because it's a, it's a parabola. And those are curved, and they don't, we can't really apply, apply the same logic exactly to, to a parabola. So I'm not even going to bother making little tick marks. We, we know what a parabola looks like. Like that. So here we don't really have as clear of a rate of change. We can look at the actual shape of the graph and kind of make some assumptions here. Uh, first, at the very bottom here, it's very flat. It's almost like we're not even changing at all. If you put in some x here, you only get a little bit of y out. But if you go over to the right side of this graph, you put a little bit of x in, say going from this point to this point, you get a lot more y. You increase a lot. And the same is true over on this left side of, of, of the graph, but almost in the opposite, where if we're going from left to right, we actually decrease in our y's for x that we put in. So how can we determine the rate of change of this parabola then? Or how can we put that in math? Well, we can draw a tangent line. Let me do this in another color. So a tangent line is a line that intersects a graph at just one point. So I'll choose this point right here and draw a line that just skates along it. And this is called a tangent line. And as it turns out, the slope of this line is the rate of change of this parabola right at that point. And the rate of change is going to increase the further up the parabola we go because we're getting more y's out for each difference in x. And as we get closer to the bottom, it goes all the way down actually to zero at that exact point. Similarly over here, we have tangent lines with negative slopes because they're pointing down and to the right rather than up and to, 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 to the right. So that's how we can think about what the rate of change is for a curve, but we're still not, this still isn't really that helpful of a thing until we get to our next realization here, which is these two graphs are actually related. Um, 
y equals 2x is the derivative of y equals x squared. And I'll show what that looks like down here. So we have y equals x squared. And we take the derivative of this function. So we'll say y prime, is just an apostrophe. This is a common notation for der derivative. There are other ways to show it, but I'm keeping it simple here. y prime is equal to 2x. And we get 2x for, uh, there's different rules for how to take the derivative for x to a power. It's called the power rule. You bring the exponent down. So that's where the 2 comes from. And then you subtract 1 from what your power was. So x to the 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is just 1, and x to the 1 is just 1, or it's just x, I'm sorry. So we don't really write an exponent there because x to the 1 is just an x. So great. y equals 2x is the derivative of x squared. I'm sorry, y prime equals 2x is the derivative of y equals x squared. <laughs> and we can see that reflected in the actual graphs here too if we know what to look for. So as I said, the slope of the tangent line is the rate of change, and the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So right here, we can see that on the right side of this line, uh, or on the right side of this graph, our line is always positive. The, the, the values here are above the x-axis in this quadrant. Similarly, on the right side of this parabola, our, the slope of the tangent line is always positive as well. They're pointing up and to the right. Right here at 0, 0, at the origin, the, the y value here is 0, and the slope of the tangent line here is also 0. And finally, on the left side, our y values of the line are negative, and we get negative slopes of the tangent line. If you want to, do this, if you want to know the slope of the tangent line, say the point x equals 1 right there, you would go over here to the graph, plug in x equals 1, you would get 2. So the slope of the tangent line right there is 2, and that's a very common exercise to do in a calculus class. So let's talk about integrals now. Integrals are area under the curve, and that might sound unrelated, but as it turns out, it actually is very related to calculus. Basically, integrals and derivatives undo each other. So in the same way that we derived x squared to get to 2x, we could integrate 2x to get back to x squared. And I'm making a bit of a simplification here, so don't take my word quite at my word. So if the integral is area under the curve, let's find the area under, the, under this line, because lines are nice, and see how that relates to the graph of this parabola. So let's find the area between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So we, we form a triangle here. The base is 1. The height is 2. And we can use our trusty 1 half base times height formula to find the area of this red triangle is equal to 1. Again, when we went from 0 to 1, the area of the triangle is 1. Now over here, if you look at the value when x equals 1, we get y equals 1. 1 comma 1. And that's not a, a coincidence. The y values on this graph are going to be the area of the triangles over here. Whatever the area under the graph is, we can get a, a, a y value on this parabola. Basically, as many times as we want, we could derive x squared, and then we could integrate 2x back, and we just go back and forth. This is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. And I'm going to write what that actually looks like here. And first, I'll start off with saying the integral of a function. I'll say f of x dx. Now, don't worry too much about the notation here. Just know this weird s-looking thing is the integral symbol, and this dx says what variable we're integrating in terms of, because sometimes you have functions with x's and y's and z's, but here we're just worrying about x's. So all this means is just taking the integral of f of x, and f of x and y are interchangeable. It's just a bit more common to see f of x get used in this context. But just know we could have put y here as well, because y is 2x. And so, as I said, this is the, the integral, and if integrals and derivatives undo each other, we could put this in parentheses and take our familiar apostrophe for prime. And if we're integrating and deriving something at the same time, we're really not doing much at all. We just get our original f of x back out, which is also y. This is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's a little bit of simplified representation of it, but 
all it really says is that if you integrate something and then derive it, you just get your original function back out. You haven't actually done anything. Now let's wrap up with two examples of calculus that you may have already encountered without re realizing it because calculus often gets hidden away. First one is from physics and it's about projectile motion. Now you may notice that we have a t squared here. We, we have a parabola and here we just have a line because we just have a t. And just like with our example before, if you were to take the derivative of position, you would get velocity. And that can make intuitive sense because velocity is how fast your position is changing. And if the derivative is the rate of change, then of course, if you take the derivative of the position, you should get your velocity because that's how fast your position is changing. Same here with the more you accelerate, the, the, the more and more you're speeding up or slowing down. So if you were to derive velocity, you would get acceleration because that's how fast your velocity is changing. And for the same reason, if you had your acceleration and you wanted velocity, you could integrate. And likewise, to get back up to position. This is a little bit of simplification. Again, sometimes you need some, some extra pieces of information here. But basically, as long as you have one of these equations, you could figure out both the, of the, the, the others. And this is the real issue that maybe really start to enjoy calculus because I happen to be taken a, cal a calculus class at the same time as an, an algebra-based physics class. And this relationship was not taught at all, of course, because it's based in algebra, not calculus. But realizing this on my own was kind of mind-blowing to, to me. But yeah, there's, there's one other example you may have encountered if you've taken a stats class. And that's with the normal distribution or a bell curve or, you know, it sometimes gets some different names, but basically a bell curve. And if you're totally unfamiliar with it, don't worry, worry about this part of the video too much, but basically you can use this graph of a bell curve to find probabilities. And in this example I chose here on the graph, I just did our medium plus two times our standard de deviation, so it depends on how much things are deviating, but basically the probability that <laughs> our inverse and off the street is between 5'7 and 5'11 could be the area underneath this bell curve between those two values. And of course, the area under the curve is just an integral. If you've ever punched it into a calculator to figure out the area underneath this, say a one stat z test, that's also based in calculus. It's using tricks to figure out the area underneath the, the curve here all, all the same. I hope this video helped you feel more informed on what calculus is about and what to expect. I always thought math was boring until I took a calculus class and then I ended up majoring in math. Without getting too philosophical on you, it felt like to me calculus was the gateway that you step through to understanding all the cool parts of math that have interesting applications. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, I do have a Twitch stream where I stream video games and math help. I'd love if you headed over there, gave me a follow, said hi, asked me a math question. Um, I am doing as many math streams because it's summer, but as we get into fall, I'm going to pick it back up full steam. Thanks so much for watching.